And if you have divorced your spouse and they're still living, we have said it. We have said it. If you are divorced and just because you said it don't make it right. Your spouse is still living and no one has died and you are married now to someone else. I'm sorry, brother and sister, you are committing adultery. Adultery is forgiven under the dispensation of grace. There are people that say, well, I want to have sex. Go have it with your husband that you left. You talking stupid because some marriages are not, are, are irreconcilable. I think that's the right word, word. Irreconcilable differences. Have you ever heard of it? Some marriages cannot be reconciled. In other words, you talking stupid. Go find your wife and do whatever it takes to get her heart to bend towards you so you can get back right in that covenant and get rid of your adulterous affair. Your you talk like an idiot. You talk like an idiot talking about a covenant. I'm going to do a teaching on uh covenant. Okay. Nobody is under a covenant right now. You got it? Nobody is under a covenant. Not even God. I'm going to do a teaching on that. You're talking foolish woman. Walter's marriage. See, man, listen. She really thinks that People have moved on out of their marriages and they don't want to, neither one of them, they are, they are in agreement. Ne nobody wants nobody. You know, it's like when people get married, you don't get it all. You don't, you, you don't know that whole person as a whole. Uh, you don't know a lot about that person when you get married. It's a hit or miss. Sometimes it works out. You got people that's been married 40 years and decide that they don't want to be married anymore. <clears throat> and they are both in agreement. But this woman here is telling, which is the most ridiculous thing. She's telling people that have gone through a divorce that if they want some sex, they got to go back to their first wife, their first husband, do whatever it takes to make it right. See, that's what you call the law in full effect. She's about the law and she, she's not going to see it any other way. But under the dispensation of grace, ma'am, adultery is forgiven. Because once saved, always saved. So, you know, the way the Lord uh, looks at us, he looks at at us in the present tense as if we are already forgiven just as if we have never sinned the you know we're justified in other words so the way the lord looks at us when we when you receive the gospel and you believe the gospel and you receive the gospel from that point on you receive the seal in which she doesn't understand how none of this works. And it's, that's why she's going to continue to have people doing all these old crazy, don't make sense, outlandish things when it comes to divorce and remarriage. Now, the way God sees us once we receive the seal of promise, he doesn't see us as sinners any longer. Now, does that mean that you're perfect? See, they get, when they was talking about 1 Corinthians about uh, no whoremonger, no idolater, no liar, no thief. Listen, when Paul wrote that, do you think that he didn't have that going on in his church? You think everybody was squeaky clean? No, what Paul was saying, these are the people that are not going to make it. But then he came back and said, but you have been washed. So just by us being washed in the blood, that is our position. It does, I mean, it, yes. So we now at this point, yeah, we are to work out our salvation, but it is a process, okay? Like she had to come to 
the process where she is now, it took a process. Okay, and she's still not there. You cannot tell a person who's already moved on in their life that uh, they have to divorce their, 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 their current spouse and go back and make it right with the first uh, person that they made the covenant with. That doesn't work under the dispensation of grace. Because you got too many flawed people. And that's why God had to give us grace. Because he already factored in all of this. He are, our, our identity is in Christ. Not in another human being. Okay. And uh, Christ died for all of this. And we're not. You know, and I know people. You know. They, they think. Well. You. You taking advantage. Well no. That's not your problem. That's not your concern. If Christ did it, then you let, let, let Christ worry about that. That's not, you, you don't get to measure how much grace a person can, can have under the dispensation of grace. Because Romans tells us that where, where sin abounds, that much more grace will have to abound as well. In other words, grace never runs out under the dispensation of grace. Grace never runs out until that person takes their last breath. Okay. And then it's over. But as, as long as a, a person, like for instance, a person, they have gotten a divorce, then they have gotten remarried. Every day that person gets grace every day under the dispensation of grace. If he is a believer. Now, I don't want to have to do another teaching on this because I have videos that I feel like really clear this up, but she's coming back on the little sneak attack, trying to reiterate it, to try to indoctrinate people to believe her foolishness about divorce and remarriage. Under the dispensation of grace, it's allowable, okay? It is allowable and forgiven. She tells people to turn their backs on their families. And never to look back. But then she'll turn right around and say, oh, 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 you can't break that covenant with your first, with your first spouse. You can't break that covenant. You talking foolish and ignorant at that. And you got 73 likes for that foolishness. And that's why I'm up here on my channel. <laughs> if you don't get tired of pushing that bad information out, I won't get tired of refuting you. Now, if you think somebody that's in their second marriage is going to stop what they're doing, they probably have a couple of kids, and mostly everybody I know, they have already been married two or three times already. I guess there won't be anybody in heaven according to you, right? Oh, but you're going to be up there. And what you really need to do, you need to make yourself available for a spouse. Because you, you, you just need somebody to keep you busy. You need somebody to keep you busy. You got too much time on your hands where you can jump up here and try to bring that bad doctrine, that false doctrine in which you're going to have to answer for, bringing all that condemnation to the body of Christ. You think somebody in their second and third marriage needs to stop what they're doing and go back and, and get back married with somebody that they left and don't want to look back and everybody's in agreement. They Both parties agree. Look, we don't have what it takes for a marriage, okay? Let's just go our, uh, and depart our own separate ways. And then you're going to try to say that they don't get another opportunity at love? You're talking foolish. And you're talking ignorant. Nobody's going to sign up for your foolishness but these 73 people. It, might, it may go even higher. Because unfortunately, people do not understand. They do not understand doctrine. And this wolf right here... She's going to always have an audience as long as you got ignorant people in the world who don't understand the Bible. She's going to always have an audience. 
She's ignorant. Trying to bring people under condemnation. And they done moved on. They're happy. But she, she's not happy. She's the only one. She's not happy. Everybody is happy but her. And you must be out of your mind if you think somebody's going to undo what they have done. Now, you that's just making it 10 times worse. I mean, you really think that people are going to do that and you don't care. Oh, no, the law is the law, according to you. Oh, that's the law. No, you got to go back and make it right with that first spouse. Maybe they don't want to make it right. Some people, you just don't want that in your life anymore. I Look, I know you, you have been through some relationships motivating you to win. And looking back, I know you're probably thanking God that you did not marry that person. But if you had have married that person and, 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 and come away with what you were feeling about that person, that that person was not a good match. Oh, yeah, you would uh, you would have divorced that person in a heartbeat. But uh, you, you don't have any kind of understanding how this thing works. But what I'm going to say to people, because I have videos, if you want to get my video, but what I'm saying under the dispensation of grace, this is allowable. You can divorce and get remarried under the dispensation of grace. Now, in the kingdom church, Jesus had a lot to say. But even in the kingdom church, God gave a measure of, of grace even under the law. Even under the law. Now, how much more under grace will God make allowance for divorce and remarriage? The issue is not divorce and remarriage. Don't get it twisted. The issue is, have you received Christ, the finished work of the cross? That's the issue. And see, she's dancing all around that, you know, because her gospel is just so twisted. And she, like I said, she's always tried and has been trying for ever since she's been on her channel to find a way where, oh no, grace won't cover that. Her attack is on grace. That's where her attack is. She hates it. And she's the main one that needs it more than anybody. Because, you know, when you, when, you, when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, if you make it up there, I don't know. But uh, you're going to have to answer for all those videos that you put out on public display for everybody, for all ears to watch and see. You're going to have to give an account. And that's what you need to be worried about. But, uh, no, just for the record, if you are divorced and remarried, enjoy your new uh, bride. Enjoy your, your bride. Enjoy the choice that you made. I hope that you don't uh, have any regrets. But if you do, there is still grace. You can get out and you can do it again. There is grace for you. We learn. We live and we learn. Okay? And there is no indictment given to the body of Christ who decides not to stay in a horrible marriage. You are fickle in your theology uh, motivating you to win. Don't forget, only eight people got on Noah's Ark. And, and I already explained, I already explained what that was all about. And it had nothing to do with what you're talking about. Only eight people got on Noah's Ark because Noah did not have the giant genetic. His genetics was pure. He did not have the giant gene. That's why there was only eight people. Okay? And God chose Noah because he had the perfect genetics. She's trying to say only eight people. That means Noah was right. No, Noah wasn't as righteous. He was righteous, but he was not perfect. 
He did what God told him to do. He preached for 120 years and didn't win a soul. He did what God told him to do. But he was now nowhere near perfect. And that was proven after he got off the boat. She's trying to make it out like, oh, you, we better watch every little thing we do because only eight people may. And plus, that was Old Testament. What does that have to do with the body of Christ under the dispensation of grace? How are you going to make that comparison? I told you you was twisted. And what did the Bible tell us? When Jesus returned, it's going to be as it was in the day of Noah. People is doing what they want. Yeah, and when Jesus returns, guess where you're going to be? I hope, oh, I know where I'm going to be. I can't speak for you. When Jesus returns on the sec at the second coming, okay, it's going to be the same thing as it was in the days of Noah. But now, the body of Christ, we won't be there. We we're going to be seated in heavenly places. Don't get all caught up in the book of Revelation like I've told you all once before. Don't get all caught up in the book of Revelation and don't let anybody try to bring you into the book of Revelation. It's, it's a good uh, reading, gives us understanding of the future events, the kingdom events. It will be, the book of Revelation will be under the kingdom gospel once again. Okay. Not the grace gospel. It will be under the kingdom gospel. And ironically, you're going to have these false teachers even at that time. And they are going to be giving people false assurance by saying that God's grace will cover them and will cover all their sins. So you see, it's going to be, they're going to, they're going to switch out the gospels. We are under the grace gospel. And so what does Satan do? He goes through every attempt to try to put us under the kingdom gospel. And there's his agent right there before you, ladies and gentlemen. She's one of his agents that's putting people under the kingdom gospel. She's coming in a uh, cloak of righteousness, very deceptive, packaged, uh, got everything looking picture perfect as far as Holiness, being holy and sanctified, but underneath that cloak of righteousness, she is bringing people under condemnation and she's bringing people under the kingdom gospel, which is the gospel that is not for the body of Christ. To do, but I'm here to tell you and encourage you, friends. You can live a righteous life. You can shun evil. Yeah, because you know why? Because uh, we're already righteous. Okay, maybe not according to all of our deeds, but we are already righteous. And the Lord, the Lord made us righteous through the blood, through the finished work of the cross. This is our righteousness, not by anything you do, because. Whether you go, uh, whether you die wearing this garment right here, or whether you die in a pair of yoga pants, if you are both in the body of Christ, you're still going to have to get a new body. So you can try to fix up that uh, flesh all you want to, but it still won't be fit for heaven. You still got to get rid of it because it is sinful. Your body, your body, our bodies are sinful. Created because you know what? We still walking around as Adam. We're saved by grace, but we still got the form of Adam. We still got that sinful nature as Adam in our flesh. Our souls are sealed. And like uh, that testimony that uh, Miss Wally gave, and she said that every part of her went to hell. Her soul, her spirit, her flesh, all every part of her went to hell. But see, under the dispensation of grace, your soul would not go to hell because it was sealed. See, that, that right there, that's a question of, I don't know if people are saved or not. 
that's something that they need to uh, come to terms with and to make sure that they got saved under the right gospel in order for it to be valid. Um, your soul will never go to hell once you have been saved. Once you have believed the gospel, your soul belongs to God. You can, but guess what? You got to, you got to, you got to understand it begins with a thought. You got to know your thoughts is what traps you in your loins. Your loins are out of control because your mind is. And your mind is overstimulated by your friends, where you go, your entertainment. Look, it's just part of being in this fleshly body. All these things come up on us and some overcome and some doesn't. And when Christ died on the cross, he had already factored all of that in. So uh, you have not arrived. You are not perfect. You got things that you need to be worried about and dealing with as it relates to yourself. You don't have an argument because everybody has to work out their own salvation. You can't work out somebody else's salvation. You got to work out your own salvation with fe uh, fear and trembling. Okay? You don't work for your salvation. You work out your salvation. That means your conduct. You got to work it out on a daily. Oh, so you got all your work done. You got all your I's uh, dotted. You got all your T's cross so now you can jump up here and try to tell somebody else how to uh get get the board out of their eyes get the speck out of their eyes you got everything down so uh now you you can actually no you ain't got it down there's some stuff you do, like your voice anger anger issues you need to be working on that you don't need to be telling somebody else how to live their life you need to be working on your anger you need to be working on your pride. You need to be working on your self-righteousness. Uh, that's because, you know, that's the very reason why you can't even bring yourself to apologize to all the people that you have hurt all in the name of religion. You, you don't have any plans on going back and reconciling with these people because you don't really think that they are worth it. I got all these videos out about you. I haven't heard nothing. You, you gave me a, a command to go to your uh, email. I'm not going nowhere. No, you on my platform. If you want to make it right with me, get in my comments and we'll talk about it before I public forum you've heard a lot of people and you have no intentions on making it right because you don't think that they matter you look at them with an evil eye like they don't matter and uh, i'm sorry you're gonna have to give an account people didn't do anything to you you were the offender you brought the offense because you didn't get your way. You didn't get your way. You got your comments shut out. What kind of fellowship? You call yourself, uh, I, I guess you don't want to really look at your channel as a fellowship, but it is a fellowship, whether you like it or not. It is a fellowship because you are, you have the mic in your hand, you are on your channel, and you are bringing some uh, exhortation and bringing some, some word, even though it's not the right word half the time. But uh, yeah, it's fellowship. You have moderators. You have people in your chat. If they don't say the right thing, then they get, they get deleted. You are one-sided. Okay, I, who, who in the world can submit to something like that? Well, you know, God is not pleased with that because you, you're taking away a person's uh, freedom of speech. You think you, who do you think you are? You could just sit up here on your channel and, and spew out all this stuff and nobody can challenge you because they'll get deleted. So that tells me off the bat, you're not a fair person to begin with. You are not a fair person. 
And that's just not good. I don't know how you think you're going to fare before God. God is not pleased with your behavior. Okay? And you, your voice, you can't turn your volume down. Why? Because something is going on on the inside. It won't allow you to. You're full of rage and anger. You couldn't shut your volume down if you wanted to. When you first get on your channel, yeah, you start off calm. But I, I the, 10 minutes later, that volume is all the way maxed out. So anyway, uh, let's skip on past that. Uh, under the dispensation of grace, uh, divorce and remarriage is allowable. Women who are watching pornography with each other. Oh, girl, you get meeting. messy. Messy, messy, in messy. Context, put it in context. Shut up. That's my word. Having sex outside of marriage. You, once you're married, that bed cannot be defiled by sex. Because you have now exchanged vows for a monogamous relationship with that person. Now, if y'all got issues, you got that's where communication. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta talk it out. See what's going on. Is there some physical things going on? Nonetheless, don't don't believe the hype. Oral sex is filth. Oral sex is perversion. Okay, I'm not gonna touch that because I've already did a video or, or two or three. I'm done with it. She she has tons of videos on it. Um, now she's already, you know, I've already rebuked her for getting in people's marriage beds. And, um, hey, under the dispensation of grace, if that's your spouse, okay, if that's your spouse, there's no condemnation. Your bed is undefiled. Don't listen to this old wretched woman who don't know what she's talking about, okay? And uh, I'm not going to deal with that because, uh, obviously, she was, um, she has already, she already has pre- conceived ideas about sex period so she's not a sex expert she's not a sex um teacher um she speaks on matters that she knows nothing about and like i said i have videos at least three videos on the topic of sex and if anybody is qualified to speak on the subject matter it would be me as opposed to her Okay, <laughs> I know more about it than she does. And I'm telling you, biblically speaking, uh, the marriage bed is undefiled. As long as you two are in agreement, then hey, the sky is the limit. As long as you two are in agreement and there's no offense on either side, make your marriage pleasurable. Okay, make it pleasurable, enjoy one another, be creative. Okay, I don't even want to touch that, so I'm moving on. I'm done with that. I've got videos, get my videos, watch my videos. I broke it down, and uh, she, she wants to indoctrinate people. That's why she keeps on bringing these same old topics about sex, about divorce and remarriage, about this, that, the other what she's just a miserable person okay a, a misery loves company that's why she got 76 people that signed up misery loves company patient is it is unclean it is perversion don't let nobody trick you no you you're the right? trickster honey you are the trickster and uh furthermore i'm sorry that you had a terrible sex life but uh, stop hating, girl. Stop hating. Let people alone. Get out of their beds. You ain't got no business there. Worry about saving some souls. Getting some souls saved. Preach the gospel. Quit worrying about what people stop being tormented by sundresses and yoga pants and sex and divorce and remarriage. Stop being triggered. Just stop. Stop being triggered. And, and invest in Jesus. And Jesus, he is not glorified, nor is God, by, by judging us. That's why he gave us Jesus. 
Yeah, and you need to remember that. That's why he gave us Jesus. And you don't get to decide how much of Jesus that he that we are given. You don't get to decide. You worry about your own salvation and leave everybody else's alone. Okay, while you trying to bring that condemnation, I'm coming right behind you and I'm bringing freedom. Ask for forgiveness. Turn from this evil. Turn, my friend. If you, if you are already saved, if you've already uh, accepted the Lord Jesus and the finished work of the cross, you don't have to keep going back to the altar like they did in the Old Testament with that sacrifice. You are already forgiven. You don't have to keep going every time saying, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry, just like they did with them burnt offerings. You, you are forgiven once because Christ died once. Every time you keep going back asking him to forgive you, he's got to die for that sin. No, he's already done done it. He's already done done it. It's a finished package. It's a finished deal. It's done. It's a done deal. Now, you are forgiven. That is your position. Now, work on you, like I'm telling her, work on yourself because you got some sins. Work on your own sins and quit worrying about everybody else's. And receive the anointing of grace and then go back. The anointing of grace? What kind of talk is that? Oh, you just making this stuff up as you... <laughs> You just making this stuff up as you go. That's why I got your picture right there. I got that mug shot of you right there. And share. I'm being mean, y'all. I'm and sorry. Go back tell your friends. Go back and tell people that you meet that I used to be addicted and God has set me free because his word came to me. His word brings life. His word is what goes down in. And even though I fail at his word, okay, I'm still forgiven. I still have my name in heaven tell them that tell them that break up that fallow ground okay it's the oh truth. yeah 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 hell is waiting for many religious people i don't know about yeah that. hell is is waiting for many religious people in which i have accused you many times of being religious so um i i'm not going to say hell is waiting for you because i don't know but um i do know that yeah religious people who want to want to snub what christ has done on the cross and they want to snub it and say, that's not enough. I got to do this, that, the other. That's not quite good enough. That's the narrow road. When people don't want, see that narrow road is Christ dying on the cross. That's as easy as, easy as it gets. That's the narrow way. Christ died, dying on the cross. And all you have to do is to believe it and receive it. But the wide road, think of all these religions. I'm not going to call them out. Think of all the religions of the world today. And they're all works-based. There's no grace in none of them. That's the wide road to destruction because they're using all of their efforts. The cross that's not, that's nothing. That's too easy. And Jesus already knew it. He said it. They're not going to want to take this easy way. They want to go all other kinds of ways. And that's this woman right here. She don't want to go the narrow way, but she talks about it a lot, but no, she doesn't want to go the narrow way. She wants to take the wide road that leads to destruction. Too, but friend, I'm checking my life every day. I think about heaven. You you check in your life, but why haven't you done anything about it? Because you you have a lot of error in your life. You are self righteous. That's what you're checking. That's what you're doing. You're not checking nothing because you should have found them errors in your life, starting with the what the the perversion of the word that you're teaching. You have perverted the word. Every day I think about hell. Every day I think about my response. I don't think about hell. I don't think about hell. Why? Because I'm not going there. Why should I think about hell when I'm not going there? I'm going to teach and preach this gospel so that uh, others won't go there. I don't think about hell. I think about heaven. And that's what you should be thinking about if you are a member of the body of Christ.
responsibility to tell people the truth that I know about Jesus. I am not outsourcing that. My witness for Jesus, I want it to be real in my private life and my because there are married people addicted to pornography. Girl. I am fundraising for 250,000 t-shirts that are going to be given but my private work, that's between me and Origins, where did it come from? You're deceived but you believe the people mentally far across a priest would slaughter those lambs. He will. He will wash you. Crucify the deeds of your flesh. Crucify it. Crucify it. And get away from anybody that's sensual and sexual don't call nobody your friend and you know that they're into whoremongering. How can your best friend be a whoremonger? If your best friend just wanted to get those prayer requests and just the part I wanted down and send them to the other sisters. Friend, you got to get free. It's gluttony. And not only can it turn into gluttony, it can tear up your body. Oh, yes, yes, and yes. So, so enough said. If you need prayer, go to motivatingyoutowin.com. Sister Cami, I saw her on the live. Sister Cami heads up that prayer. Uh, well, not that. She heads up the prayer team. She's the first one to get those prayer requests, and she strips those down and send them to the other sisters. Friend, you got to get free. Listen, I got a video on outsourcing prayer to Sister Cami. Sister Pat oh, Slaughter, whoever is on the prayer, who lead, who heads the prayer team. Look, going to your prayer line is not going to do anything. Okay? Because people have to learn how to pray and get free. It, it, it's not going to, you know, they, people have to make up their own mind about their life. And I told you about having a prayer line. But you want to keep on being hard-headed and you want to keep on having your prayer line and have people outsource their prayers, their relationship with Christ. Like they don't have no relationship. Now, if, if, if unbelievers want to go to your prayer team, which I don't know your people and uh, everybody that runs over there don't know your people. So uh, I don't see where we should put all of our trust in some people that are flawed just like we are. They got to work out their own salvation. You you see, I don't like no prayer line because, you know, you act as if they have more authority than the person who needs prayer. Like I said, if you are an unbeliever, yeah, go to the prayer line. Go because you need help. But now I'm talking to you, you believers. I'm rebuking you. If you step one foot in that prayer line. I'm rebuking you. Because you need to have your own relationship with the Lord. And I'm rebuking, motivating you to win. Uh, people shouldn't have to go to your prayer line. You just want people to go to your prayer line. So they'll start feeling obligated to your ministry. And start. And you'll start getting back in their pockets. That's the only reason why. Because you could pray. Don't you have enough power and authority to pray over people? Pray for people over it right now on your channel. You out, you, you passing prayer requests around. I don't think you have a good prayer life. I really don't. Cause I'm, you, you really suspect to me. I don't think you have a good prayer life. Cause, uh, you, you, if you feel like people need prayer, what I'm telling people, yeah, we could have prayer like on my channel. I would love to have prayer. Okay, but uh, most of the people on my channel, they're not my friends. They're not my friends. They're, they're just spectators, unfortunately. I'm trying to win them. Okay, I'm trying to win as many as I can. I, I, I'm trying to turn my, my uh, foes into friends, but I'm only going to do it with this word. If, if the spirit don't hit you in what I'm saying to you, don't even bother to give me no thumbs up. I want the spirit to hit you and connect to what I'm saying. And if that doesn't happen, then don't even worry about it. Okay. So, uh, going to her prayer line, you don't know those people. You don't know what kind of walk they have. You don't know nothing about those people. You may come out better praying for yourself. Okay. Under the dispensation of grace, there's just no such thing as having a prayer line. 
because now the rent, the, the veil has been rent and torn. We're one-on-one -on -one with God now through Christ. We don't have to go through a middle person for prayer. She's got that all twisted. But like I said, I don't want to spend too much time talking about it because I've already uh, done a, a couple of videos on it. Go go to my um, archives and, and go through my videos. The one I have on outsourcing prayers. I broke it down. It's just not right. It's not right how she's sending people. And I just believe that there is it's un it, it's got motive behind it that is 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 not kosher. The motive behind it is to get people running to her prayer line so they can send get start sending donations. And that's just not uh, sincere enough for me. But anyway, uh, I enjoy everybody today. I'm thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to move on. Uh, I hope that I was able to help and help to bring you out of condemnation that she has tried to put on the body of Christ. I hope that I have succeeded in trying to help you to overcome it and to not be uh, caught up in the madness of motivating you to win. All right. Well, God bless you all. Have a wonderful and blessed day.